Hey everyone, Rod DeGeorge here and welcome to my channel. If you dig everything about music and guitar, please consider subscribing as we deal with many facets of it right here on this channel. Today, another episode in my series, Different Strokes. In this episode, the incredibly talented Sam Bell and myself will take a turn on Jimi Hendrix's classic, Purple Haze. We'll jam over it and then we'll talk a little bit about it so you can get some greater insights into our approaches. So here we go, hope you enjoy. Sam Bell and you just heard me improvising over the classic Jimi Hendrix tune Purple Haze. First of all I'd like to say thanks to Rod for having me on this channel, it's a huge honour. I hope that I can impart something that might be helpful to somebody in talking about my approach to that guitar solo. First of all let me say that Hendrix has an unmistakable influence on all guitarists today and perhaps one of the many things that he brought to music apart from his songwriting, his chordal approach, his tone and you know, his, his bends and aggression was his general attitude of the instrument and whenever you heard Hendrix there was never any filter you heard exactly how he was feeling through the instrument. Some things that I'd say were notable about my approach in the solo were my pick attack and my bends and vibrato. I tried to keep the pick attack very expressive and really dug in at a 45 degree and even more so at some points probably to really get that sort of squishy, angry attack, let, letting the string, you know, really, letting the pick, sorry, go really deep into the string before uh, letting it sort of slip off the pick, to so really get that kind of shrill, aggressive tone through the string, and then mixing that with the very wide vibrato, very sort of um, key-like motion with the vibrato there. I was also using a lot of hand-ons and pull-offs um, some people might recognise that kind of sound of those licks, maybe hearkening back to players like Van Halen, um, Gary Moore and Paul Gilbert, we all know and love. So um, those licks are just things which are in my playing, which came out at the time. And a lot of those pull-off combination picking licks are really good for that snarly sound, hence why they're so successful for those style of aggressive players. You know, if you watch Gary or Van Halen or, or Paul Gilbert himself play, the pick attack is very strong, but it's always displaced with the legato feel. So a lot of that was going through my head as well. And those faster lines, the focus is more like a drum feel. Um, if you look, watch like Mitch Mitchell or any of those sort of early sort of, um, sort of mid '60s drummers in those rock bands, there's these fills which are just kind of, you know, doing this over the bar line, but the accents are always in strong places. So that's kind of what I was you know, on analysis of the solo, um, that's probably how I was feeling it rather than necessarily, oh, I'm going to play the fast lick right now. And at the end there, you know, I'm, I've come out of an adrenaline rush and I'm kind of coming towards the end. I've got to land it on a good note. So that was my kind of goal at the end. So anyway, I hope some of my ramblings are helpful. But uh, thanks again, Rod. Enjoy and best of luck with everyone's playing out there. We're all students 
and it's all part of the fun journey to discover new things about our playing and ourselves. I'll see you soon. All right, I'd like to thank Sam for doing such a great job on this. Always a pleasure for me to hear him play. Such a great player and very nice guy. Great insights as well. As far as how I approach this, like Sam said, Jimi Hendrix uh, had no filter. He played off the cuff. What he was thinking is what you heard. And so I tried to take more of that approach as well. This is, a, for me, a rock song. So for me, something that gets that, that feel and vibe across is just the minor pentatonic or blues scale. In this case, I used E blues, E minor pentatonic, E Dorian uh, throughout the whole thing. And also, although our solos may sound different, our philosophy behind the approach was very similar, hearing what Sam was saying. Also, as Sam said, the aggressiveness of his approach, like for me, that came out more in the bends. I wasn't trying to be very pretty and precise with the bends. There, I was just using my ear to create the right kind of tension. Also with the bends, I was trying to grab the adjacent string as well to create more of a, a growling type scream type sound like, you know, uh, and again, I wasn't necessarily trying to going up to that exact pitch. I was going just by my ear to hear the sound that I was hearing in my head to create that tension. So right there, I was actually going up sometimes to the flat five. So with the bends, I was trying to get aggressive and create that excitement and that tension that kind of tweaks your ear a little bit. Similar also to what Sam said about the drums, I do that as well as far as accenting certain beats, whether it be with a pick or whether it be with a finger tap. It's almost like a snare drum doing a roll on the snare, accenting different beats. I do that with my pick or with my right hand as far as finger tapping. So we had similar approaches in that vein as well. But overall, harmonically, it was pretty much E blues, E minor pentatonic, and E Dorian. And I was also trying to create some space, create some phrasing. I was playing with what I was hearing in my head over this, and I was hearing some space in there, and then I was hearing quick flurries of notes. So basically, my approach was very rock inspired, at least the type of rock that I grew up listening to. Harmonically, it was pretty straight ahead. In the faster runs, I tried to accent on certain beats, whether, like I said, be it with my pick or with my finger tapping with my right hand. So hopefully that gave you some insight as to how I approached this. I'd like to thank Sam once again. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you like what you see here, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button and YouTube will keep you up to date. Also, please feel free to check out some of my other videos, whether it be original material, cover songs, or some more in this Different Stroke series. That being said, my name's Rod DeGeorge. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Enjoy your day.